Aloha Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your volunteer buddy as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from my home, the shelter, and downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii, where 45 very colorful and diverse hosts of variety of topics come together and share their hearts. Today, our topic of discussion on the shelter from dome to home. A story. Whenever we can save a life and make it better for someone, then this is a success story. What I would like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea the solution to today's homeless problem must include a holistic approach with God as the center of transformation. Today, we are very, very honored to welcome Jerry Johnston, a former, I say a former resident of the shelter in Kahalu'u, and the exciting story of her journey of transformation in her life. A success. Aloha, Jerry. Aloha. All the way from Kahalu. All righty. Right. And what a con from Dome Home. And we have a picture of your home for the last few months. So that picture is the Dome to Home. And we are talking about your success story. I'm excited to hear more about you and your story. So let's get started, okay? So can we start by sharing some information about the shelter and what it is for and what programs are involved here? Absolutely, thank you so much, Wendy, for allowing us to get this message out. Um, the program at the shelter, it allows participants like single moms with children, uh, of course, they gotta be drug and alcohol free, mentally stable and willing to work um, at a job and then also be accepting of a God-based, faith-based program. Uh, we are partnered with IHS, also known as the Institute of Human Services. And what they do is they provide social services to an agency referrals. The term of the stay is um, availability on the affordability that they have for their housing. It goes from anywhere from nine to 24 months. And um, they would either pay a rent of $200 per month, or they have the option to work it off. So it allows everybody to be involved in this um, when they meet the mom and child uh, status. And then also um, the program includes personal and social development classes, things like financing, parenting, mm -hmm. all the good stuff that I learned. And then um, the foundation, of course, is based on spiritual transformation of the heart, which includes like Bible classes, spiritual development, church attendance, and family and community services. And that's program. Wow, all of that, all of that is very important because you know you can put a roof over your head, but if you're not from the inside out, you still just have a roof over your head. So that's again, I'm glad that you shared a little bit about the shelter with us. So what is it for, what is involved in the programs that you go through there? Uh, basically, we have the classes like I was talking about. Um, we have parenting classes that's so important for us uh, because that's things that we don't get taught. Even financial classes, I never was really taught how to, uh, you know, work on my finances, you know? So it's like just your life just goes on and, and you make a lot of mistakes. But when you're in a program like this, they, they provide you things like that and conflict management, career prepara preparation, and uh, just getting you into the job market basically. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, the type of programs they have here at the shelter. Well, that's exciting. I know that once you get into the program, you know, you have to maintain a certain level of um, conduct. And so I know that after about two months into the program, um, they're going to assess, assess you and check out where you're doing and how you're, how you're doing in your day-to-day -day, uh, activities and grow. Can you share with us uh, what they experienced, you know, going through this tour for being ass um, assessed? I'm um I I'm sorry I didn't hear the question too good there was a little bit of break oh, okay. but um okay. basically maybe why don't we go into the survey that was shared um yes. so about a couple months into the program what we were given was a survey to 
to talk about the different things that we were feeling about the shelter. And um, some of the answers were like safety, security, peace, protection from the world, and the opportunity to find God. Uh, for me, it was all of these things, uh, you know, having the safety and security aspect for my children. You know, when a family goes through trauma, it's really um, tough to feel safe, especially if you're living on the streets and, you know, you've experienced um, beatings mm -hmm. and you've experienced your things being stolen. All of that is very important at that point to have. Um, and then the protection from the world, you know, we're living on holy land. I don't know how else to say it, but it feels so peaceful and and having that opportunity to know the peace of God is just amazing that you don't really get that in living your day to day life in the outside world, I guess you can call it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Knowing that Keoku is right there with you, um, supporting you and guiding you, holding your hand in your heart day to day. I mean, that's very, very comforting. And I'm sure that's exactly what you feel while you're there on that shelter in that program. And I think that's the main crux of what we're doing there giving you stability assurance that you're not alone never alone always yes. walking and someone's there holding you accountable and, that, and yourself holding yourself accountable because you know you're being watched and you know that there's a survey coming up so you have your baby at all, all time and you know as well as i know the line out there on the street is probably very very to get in and i know you feel your blessings to have gone through that program is that right Absolutely. I, I am a changed person <laughs> and it all is through a faith-based faith -based program because I, I right. experience other uh, shelters and things like that. And it's really different when you don't have that aspect of having faith in, intertwined into the program. Right. I think that's the hope that we can offer at these shelters, you know, and everyone runs their shelter differently and the success rate at the shelter will be very great because they're not doing it alone and that's so so critical so you know thank you for introducing us to the shelter program and talking to us about some of the day-to-day um, -day dealings within the shelter the program the surveys and all that but let's find out a little bit about you now so who is jerry and how did you come to find the shelter well i'm a mother of four uh see a picture of my four children uh that picture was actually taken at the shelter wow. the one on the bottom and then uh the two children that were with me living at the shelter because they were under the age of 18 is the picture on the top and um so my son is almost 13 and my daughter is about 17 um but i tell you we learned a lot so how did we come to the shelter uh you know sometimes you think that you've got all your, what do you call that, eggs in a basket, right? Uh, you feel like you've, you've overcome a lot of things. You, you know, you can have a master's degree in business. You can have everything that you possibly think that is good to secure your life. But then trauma hits, right? And uh, that's what happened to me. That's what brought me to the shelter. And it was uh, not only my family that became homeless, but also my mother was homeless. So I was actually bringing her a to the shelter to sign up and uh the shelter coordinator at that time was princess and she said i think this application is for you because we're actually a mama children's shelter moms and kids and i said oh okay mm. and i thought that i had everything in line to just move on my own and it was going to be a studio and we we're just going to live like that and just make it like we all normally do paycheck to paycheck um but i filled up that application right. and this was, it just, it just really was that flowed well. And I found myself at the shelter and receiving their services. Wow. So could you share with us, were you considered homeless or just in between? Um, what was your status like before entering into the shelter? If you don't mind me asking. Absolutely not. Yes. Um, that's a great question. I was uh, just about to go into homelessness. It wasn't something that I was off the streets, but there are a lot of women in this shelter that uh, come off the streets, living in the vans, you know, even being pregnant and in their third trimester, getting ready to give birth, you know, all of those things that we don't think about. But those are the type of people that we're serving here at the shelter is people that 
you know, whether you're coming off the streets or you're just about to go on the streets, this is something that uh, it's like a safety net that for our homeless um, moms and children. Right. You know, and it, like you said, it could happen to anyone. And, you know, especially in the times where we're at, right, you know, we really have to be um, aware and sensitive to a lot of the sim simple issues of day-to-day -day survival. And I'm sure the communities, the villages, the shelters, um, their lines are going to get even longer. And um, because of what's going on today, um, so it's no fault of anyone except it's we find ourselves at. You know, I sat on the board of directors for about 15 years of life mission. And I, I often went to feed the people and um, really dedicated my life to serving the houseless community and the people of need. And I used to bring my children there all the time. And I just wanted to remember that we're very blessed, but that anyone end up in a shelter or even at the soup kitchen receiving food. And it's a matter of making sometimes not, I mean, it's not even making a wrong decision. It's sometimes just where life takes us. And so we have to respect everyone and everyone is created equal. And so no matter if I have a lot or I have little, we're all created the same. And you always want to remember that we all bleed the same color and that we're all created the same. But like the shelter, it offers, you know, people who just need that little assistance in that time of their life to just jump in and know that someone loves them and cares for them and that they're going to hold you accountable to get back on your feet, your two feet on your own be the created to be, be the wahini that you were created to be. And that's the success story of what was, you know, is in your, in your story and in your future. And what great knowledge you have experienced while there as well, because, I mean, right, you just took things for granted, like we all do until it's taken away. So I'm just so excited to just be, be your friend and to continue to walk with you and hear your story. Okay, so get back to everything. So you mentioned um, you had four, your four children were with you. Is that right? Or, right? And then so what about the safety for your children? You're an adult. You know what's going on. What about the safety uh, with your children? And how did the shelter protect or provide that for you and your family, the safety issue? Well, it is uh, secured grounds. Uh, and without going too far into the trauma that we experienced, it's really nice to be in a place that your children feel like they can sleep because a lot of uh, nights there were times that they didn't feel comfortable sleeping. Um, and then when we came to the shelter, we had that, just that peace and, and ability to feel safe because even having security on site, you know, that was even implemented. And I tell you, like my son would be, ah, I can sleep in the parlor today because I feel safe, you know, <laughs> or um, looking at your daughter and, and seeing that she's resting well at one, two in the morning. So those are things that you just can't, you can't buy that. You, you just can't. It, it's something that's, that you're going to live in a place that makes you feel right. secure. And not only me as a mom, um, but my children too. Yeah. And that's the main key as a mom. You want to feel that sense of security yeah. for yourself, for your family, and, and that you're providing out there and comfort. But right now, Jerry, we will have to take a 60-second break. We'll take a break, take a breath, and we'll be right back with more of your amazing story. Mahalo, Jerry. Aloha, I'm John David Ann, the host of History Lens on Think Tech Hawaii. History Lens deals with contemporary events and looks at them through a historical perspective or what we call a history lens. Uh, the show is streamed live on thinktechhawaii.com. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Mahalo and aloha.
Aloha. Here we are back with our amazing guest, Jerry Johnston. And she is a success of the shelter. We learned a bit about how you can qualify to enter into the shelter. Once you're in the shelter, what, what happens at the shelter? And what we were just discussing was the security that she felt when the shelter while raising her children. And so that's really important as a mother. We want to know that we have have some security. And you know, at, at this time with the coronavirus going on, I just wanted to, um, I did to a different um, advisors that are running different shelters or villages or communities. And um, I asked them, what are you all doing in lieu of this outbreak? And they all said that they all address the safety of the shelter as other as 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 well as they can, and that they are all honoring the stay at home guidelines by the city and state that residents are restricted to stay at home just like the rest of us unless they are essential they need to go to work. So shelter, they are asking for self reporting Do you feel sick, a sore throat or a fever in you to come forth? No different than what we're doing here, but they're really a being able to implement all of that, and that's so key. So another thing is they're limiting visitors into the shelter or just people coming about and just encouraging self-isolation. And that's the key for all of us. And if they're doing that great of a job in the shelter, everybody out there, we better start making sure that we do the same, all right? So make sure self-isolate uh, and just be careful, stay calm, stay healthy and keep yourself busy, clean the house, read more, and just learn more about how you can embed all. That's what we all should be doing anyways. In the shelter, you are a community of families. It's not just one. I believe in your shelter, there are like nine different families, correct? Is it nine families or nine it's families total? Nine. 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 Yes, So nine. what was it like and how important was it for, you know, how important a part of healing did this shelter play in your life? Oh, I, you know, I have a long list of reasons why um, this shelter has uh, really played a part in my life. But um, one that's super important is um, outside of everything that we learn in regards to having a, a better relationship, a stronger relationship with our father, Akua, Jesus, right? our father. And um, besides that, um, the reason why I, I entitled it, it takes a village is because uh, we, we just weren't brought up this way. You know, a lot of people that are in this situation really didn't have the love growing up. And you know, hey, I, I had a single mom too, but she had to work all growing up. And we didn't really get too much time with her not not at her fault at all. But um, that's just life. And um, when I talk about having a village, it, it wasn't only just the people that um, ser serve us at the shelter, which being under payroll, but it was also the community that made a big difference. You know, uh, the Windward community, just huge, allowing the shelter even to be here. Um, we are grateful. And then also um, the community within that we had people volunteering to teach the classes. Uh, we had even like the top picture, it shows uh, our choir practice, uh, one of my favorite. <laughs> and then, um, you know, just uh, being able to have that direct connection with our pastors. Uh, I can, like I said, the list can go on and on, but that's the key with all these shelters. It's people really need to take that time in our community to be a part, you know, help out because that's really how these shelters are succeeding is that's everyone's key. coming together. At right. the yeah. So, you know, what's really neat, the shelter or even the village in white and I, what's really neat is that you are told and encouraged to practice what we're supposed to be doing already outside. But because the world, the environment is so large, it's hard to implement. But with you being just nine families, it's kind of, a little bit easier to implement true community. And that's what we're lacking a lot of. And I think right now the lessons for all of us being self-isolated is just that get back to community, get back to family and start building what's supposed to be most important for all of us to enjoy the rest of our lives. So, you know, with the shelter providing uh, 
the sense of peace and security as a foundation. How did you see and how did you use that opportunity to rebuild your life? Yes, uh, thanks for asking that question. Um, for, I guess, I guess the best way I can put it is, it taught me to not be so self-consumed. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but uh, I think a lot of us know what I'm talking about, is really caring only about myself, only caring about mm -hmm. my immediate family and how are we gonna survive? Um, and how are we gonna live our day-to-day -day life and really just live with the pleasures of the world, I guess, that was me, right? Um, just being totally honest. And um, what it taught me is it, it kind of like grew inside of me where I turned out to be a person that now I wanna really give back. And that's where I was connected, very blessed to be offered a job at the Institute of Human Services at IHS. And that was the beginning of my new foundation where I'm working as an outreach specialist uh, in the employment division. And it's so important because as we're out there getting jobs for people, that allows them to get out of that homeless cycle. And so I am uh, very blessed to be giving back now. And um, if you even look at the, the picture that's under the, uh, the Hele to Work picture, it shows uh, the community within the shelter. And these are some of the mamas that we were all together getting ready for a convoy of hope. So that was a super great success. In fact, another mom and her children was able to stay here because of the things that we did with Convoy of Hope. So yeah, just a great opportunity to build that solid foundation. But more so, I think it's really having my foundation in God because I really didn't really understand how to get that. How to really understand how my father loves me because I never had a dad. Wow. I mean, I have a dad. Wow. I really have That's that priceless. opportunity to this. Yes. Yes. So, Jerry, you have been on a priceless journey. You have been on a very priceless journey and one that you probably would not have experienced had you not been able to come to the shelter. So, can really quickly, can you just share some of your life lessons that you learned while in the shelter? Just one or two. I know you got many, but just one or two. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, one of the great life lessons I've learned is really to put my whole life and trust in God. Because if I don't, then it's it's not going to work for me. The other great mm -hmm. life lesson I've learned and now I've implemented into with my older two children is um, uh, with all my kids is now I'm spending time with them and really becoming a mom. I think that they were seeking for and uh, not be all about work and be more about being that mom that uh, raises up leaders in my family. So, yeah, just love them. Wow, that's excellent. So I'm so excited about what's going on in your life. I mean, mm -hmm. you just being a mama again. I mean, that's the best job in the world. You know, and um, I just know, I want to just know how the new season in your life is anchored on God as you progress. As you progress in your life on the master plan he has for you, because everyone has a plan, not everyone lives it. But can you just share a glimpse into your praise report? Mm -hmm. Okay, my praise report. So on the last slide, I'm showing as a new beginning. Um, the bottom, I'm going to go with the bottom picture. It shows the new mom that was able to move in as me and my kids really prepared the dome, got it all cleaned up. She was able to move in really quickly, getting another person off the street. And then that shows my keys right above her picture. And then the two gals that's with me on the very top, um, we were actually at a church event and um, they're both out of the shelter, but most recently the gal on the bottom, Kailani, uh, she was able to just get her house with her children just a few days ago. So lots of exciting wow. things happening. That's exciting. Yeah. And then <laughs> so exciting. So exciting. Wow. I know we could spend an hour on you because it's your life that we want to learn and, um, guide others with, but I just really want to share with our audience a quick little video that we have on the shelter. So at this time, I'd like to watch the video, okay? The shelter celebrates one year of operation, and we want to extend a huge mahalo to everyone who donated. Our residents and staff deeply appreciate the support that has been given, whether it be time, labor, or financial contributions. 
coming to the shelter has really helped me and my family just by um, unifying us and getting us off the street a place to live together um, it's made it possible for my oldest son to come over and spend time with me and his little brother and us not having to stay out all day and try to find a place to spend time in. When he found out that he was coming, he was so happy and um, he has his own bed. Um, not only that, of giving us a place to stay, um, we are also very blessed at the shelter to be able to build our relationship with God and be, be able to grow together as a family and worship God at the same time. And so I'm very grateful for that and um, also to have the staff and family that we do outside of our family, which is really nice to have that um, kind of support from the staff and the pastors as well. I am thankful for being given the opportunity to build my relationship with God and just experience His presence. Um, throughout the year almost that I've been here, I've grown. I'm very thankful and grateful for the shelter for giving us a um, roof over our head and for all the blessings that they've given us and we're receiving every day and also for the good health for me and my kids. It just, you know, we're flowing blessings for me and my kids. So we were really happy to be into the shelter with all the nice people and I love being in the worship team. So we're just like really glad to be here and my brother loves making all these friends like everybody he loves. He's always like, can I go play outside with everybody? So we're all just like really thankful to be at the shelter. God has richly blessed us in our first year and we look forward to what he has in store for next year. Once again, mahalo nui loa and aloha ke akua. How amazing. What we learned today is that we just all need to work together to be a part of the solution. So thank you, mahalo so much, Jerry, for your success story and for sharing your heart with us. And we hope to hear from you all again with many, many more success stories from the shelter. Aloha, everyone, and mahalo, Jerry. Thank you.